Um, Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Full disclosure, anytime. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. See. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Ha! 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 All right. My you guys, God. You guys ready? Yes. All right. Ha! <laughs> I knew that was coming. So did I. I knew that was coming. Hey, guys. How's it going? We're the Terror Trio. It is July 9th. We're coming at you from Buffalo, New York. I'm just still warming up my throat here for the episode. I'm Micah. I'm Eugene. Begrudgingly. I'm Drew, unfortunately. (laughs) Hey, Drew, I got to give it up to you. Great job last night. You carried the Terror Trio Uh. on your firm tits. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And Pat, you did a great job too, my man. I, I was eight. Hey, we were in. Uh, uh, we did some traveling, so I had it downloaded. I listened to it on the plane, and I loved it. It was the special Independence Day, July Fourth edition, and then I love that Eugene popped in at the end yeah, I did. for the uh, excellent, excellent Village People talk. So if you guys, if you guys haven't that heard that yet, segment. go back to episode thirty. Segment. For a, a very non-annoying episode because I'm not in it, and uh, it's an excellent. Last ten minutes are just phenomenal. It's probably one of our best episodes, it's and I wasn't there for it. Yep. God damn it! Episode thirty. Our own oh, Terror Trio officially has more episodes than I have years in my life. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. You're like I didn't. Re- I didn't realize how young you were until you didn't know who. The Jeffersons were. Well, I knew s- who the Jeffersons were. I don't know who the guy that plays the main character is or Sherman what he Helmsley. looks like. Yeah, Sherman Helmsley. I don't know what he looks like. Hunter Hearst George Helmsley. Jefferson. He looks just like Triple I H. am a young white woman. How much Jeffersons do you I think know. I watch? Everybody knows the Jeffersons. They were on an old Navy commercial. I know Family Matters. What? I know Family Matters. You know Family Matters. Of course you do. You would know Family Matters. Yeah. Well, and Urkel. In Drew's defense, you do have like 40 years on her. So, but I mean, I well, know it because I used to watch Nick at Night, so... Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, carry on. Um, so, uh, Midsummer came out. Yeah, it did. Was that last week or so? Yeah. Uh, Horror Delilah and myself haven't seen it yet, but I know that you I saw it. Hell yeah, I saw it. What'd you think, man? Uh, don't give it like a full like review review, but just let me know what you thought. Listen, I'll say what I want. Well, don't spoil it for me, Jesus Daddy. Jesus Christ. Um, let's see. The only way I could describe Midsummer, it's hereditary meets oh shit wicker man that's huh. what people were saying even before it came out that's though. i mean there's no pretty other pretty much it's pretty much it's it's that it's that commune ritual horror subgenre where you know you know people are gonna be sacrificed and oh yeah, yeah fucked yeah. up shit's gonna happen but this movie was awesome i mean on top really? of it i feel that <laughs> Do I have any other adjectives that I use to describe something that I like? Because I feel like I say awesome a lot. I think you just like the awe. Awe? Awe. Because like it's, it's like you're a little bit of Brooklyn. Aw. How about bonerific? Aw. Bonerific. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's more you. Yeah. You're bonerific. Well, all right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for... I guess I am bonerific. No Thank you. But it's a good movie. It's 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 two and a half hours long, and it doesn't feel like it's two Holy and a half balls. hours long. Okay, that's yeah, I like. I like to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's uh the lead uh, actress Florence Pugh, fucking acted her ass off yeah. in this movie. Did she now? Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was good. I mean, <laughs> after the movie ended, obviously I had to process it a little bit, but I thought it was kind of like the world's first goriest breakup movie. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It's, okay. It's one okay. of the ways I can do it. I can put um, it. Yeah. So you had is, this is a movie that you see and you have to like go home, take it home, process it, and then have a little like, bit. Yeah. Have like an opinion of it the following day. Probably. Yeah. Kind of like yeah, the, yeah. the house that Jack built. Yeah. House that Jack built, or even Hereditary. You know, it was. It, yeah. it, it's one of those movies. Yeah. You got to process. I feel like I have to go back and rewatch Hereditary. And talk about- I'll rewatch Hereditary all fucking day. I love Will that you? movie. There all right, I, I need another crack at it because I, I didn't like it at first, but I'm hearing some different theories and stuff about it, so I I want to see it again. Yeah, 
It's good. It's good. I mean, for for you've got you've got some people online that I, I I've checked that have been talking shit about the movie and how there's plot holes and there's this and there's that. But I mean, honestly, it just it's just um horror movies are allowed to have plot holes. Yeah. I mean, unless they're yeah, serious, you like this. Belief on a lot of it. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, I mean, and from what I mean, let me see. We we're looking at the Rotten Tomato scale here. Eighty three percent we're for critics with critics and sixty one percent with uh general audiences so you know huh. it's good it, it, the, the the trailer's a little misleading is it uh yeah yeah where you think it's one type of movie but it's not you know i i, I like the fact that the movie was so fucking bright it's a horror movie like in daytime uh they're in um that's different obviously in the, the it, midsummer it never solstice. it never the sun never sets right the sun sets but it only sets for like two hours in the day and oh, it doesn't get that's that that's weird yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. when they got to sleep they got to draw like these huge blinds down and yeah, stuff. yeah yeah but i mean all in all this is this is actually a pretty a pretty good movie i mean if you're into like that slow burn type movie you're gonna you're gonna get into it if you're into Dude. like gore you're gonna get into it oh it's, it's that it's, gory yeah it's uh, yeah. the scenes that they do have are pretty fucking gory no yeah. shit and then the, just the ending sequence it was kind of actually pretty much no, because shit happens throughout the movie, but just like Hereditary, like the last 10, 15 minutes are pretty like fucked up. That's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's so good. I'm I definitely want to see I recommend it. I want to see it again. Actually. I want to catch it in like the next week or so. It's yeah. up between I'm up between that and Spider-Man. Um oh, so Spider-Man's so good too. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd like to see both, really, but because mm-hmm. I, I want to see Midsummer while it's still in the theater because I want to support uh a, a, a you know a big scale horror Absolutely. flick. Absolutely. Um, which I, uh, which leads me to, to talking about big budget horror flicks, uh, coming out in theaters. So next year, October 23rd, 2020, we're going to get the Saw movie. Saw yep. nine, they're calling it. Yep. Uh, it's, it's canon. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not really sure if Toby Bell's going to be in it or not, but so cr- Samuel L. Jackson yep. was cast to play Chris Rock's father yep. yeah. in the movie. Now, Chris Rock is playing a detective, uh, you know, following a bunch of grisly murders. Mm-hmm. But I'm already excited. For Samuel this. L. Jackson I'm so excited for this. playing I'm not the excited dad. For Chris Rock. I am. Chris ex- Rock is an awful actor. Well, yeah, but he's, he's a funny. great stand-up comedian. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's a great stand-up comedian, but like as an actor, he sucks. And mm-hmm. and and it's a Saw movie, so they're not gonna infuse any any like comedy in it maybe 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 like little one-liners here and there but i think it's it's, gonna surprise us i hope so i'm a huge saw fanatic so see i i'm not even a saw fan and i mean you all know that and i'm really stoked for this movie i mean i'm stoked that sam jackson's in it i mean sam jackson's in everything lately but yeah yeah, Uh, i'll take it there was there was like a hot minute like in the like early 2000s he was legit like in every fucking every movie, movie that came out yeah, yeah. now it seemed like he passed yeah. that he passed that what was one oh micah had the uh oh his sorry notebook. I, yeah my notebook was stuck here pat i apologize don't give me that look babe i'm sorry yeah he's gonna look you to See, death looking at me with those record a podcast you to death. Now. uh 50 shades of pat um <laughs> so yeah samuel L. jackson was in like every movie there for a minute and it seemed like he passed the torch to kevin hart who is now in every fucking movie yeah 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 you're right um but i mean hey samuel L. jackson's my favorite jedi um maybe he'll be the killer in this movie Ooh. your favorite jedi with the purple lightsaber fuck yeah dude mace windu <laughs> is so racist he will what i love it i love mace listen i love mace windu too yeah his lightsaber's purple. So what? Yeah. Grape. Yeah. The whole thing. That that was black not people why. like grape. Come on. That come was on. Not you why. can't see that. Now they're saying that the purple oh. lightsaber Lamar is a mix Julius of. Lamar uh, Bernstein will not stand <laughs> for this. <laughs> I'm going to take you to court, sir. Cue my, the Jefferson Steam music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to introduce mean. you to my black, gay, Jewish lawyer. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about that. Why not? <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to elaborate on who he was. I had. To, I have to get his name across. I'm going to make sure. It's, um, so Sam Jackson and Saw. Yes. Yes. That's super exciting. I am totally into that. Um. Oh, hey. So last week when you did the the oh, fourth, hey. uh, this is for you, Drew. Uh, last week you did the the July Fourth Independence Day episode. Mm-hmm. You left out like my favorite Independence Day movie. Uh. Here we go. Return of the Living Dead. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Fuck. 
It was definitely. <laughs> oh, that must have been during the turbulence. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But you just admit you didn't listen to the whole episode. I listened to the whole episode. I to the Drew, whole tell episode. Micah to eat a dick. Micah, eat a fucking dick. Yeah, and she had it fucking in there. So a new Sudeiko. <laughs> Sudeiko. How do you pronounce that? The Ring. The Ring movies that are from Japan. I thought the Ring movies were Ringu. Yeah. So Oh, Sudoku, like the game. Sudoku. No, no, it's, it's uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. That's the chick, uh, Samira, Sud- Sudeko. Anyways, I don't know why your mic's popping. Why is my mic popping? You're hitting it with your bicep. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm just so strong. Let me. Uh, why are you sitting? Let me move. Okay, there. Micah has never recorded a podcast okay. before. Is this better? Uh, just when you lean forward, like your arm was hitting. Oh, the sorry. I think he's jerking off under the table. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyways. So, uh, <laughs> it would be like uh, it's, 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 the movie is basically named after Samira, which I guess in Japan is Sudoku. Okay. Um, the film Sudoku, Sudoku, S A D A K O. I can't pronounce it. Sudoku is that numbers game. I was fucking around. Yes. Continue. No one cares about <laughs> it. They'll pronounce it correctly in the fucking movie. Go on. <laughs> This is going to be the longest episode of Territorio ever. <laughs> the Stan miniseries is coming out on Blu-ray news. September 24th. Uh, speaking of the Stan, did you hear that Marilyn Manson was cast in the for yeah, the new man. one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty wild, right? I can't wait for this new uh, this new reboot. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be Now, is it, is it coming out? It's coming out on like Hulu, right? Hulu no. or Amazon or? No, it's on that... Um, that CBS or NBC, whatever it is, streaming service. I don't. Is that really? No, are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I don't think so. No, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's coming out on. It's going to come out on one of the streaming platforms. Yeah, CBS? is it CBS? CBS? But yeah, I read but- an interview with Stephen King where he was talking about he's uh, he's he's super happy that you know they're going to be making it now and they're going to add two extra hours um, to it than the original miniseries. And on top of that that they can say and do whatever they want. So I didn't know there was going to, there's TVMA or, or rated R shit on the CBS app. He is going to be all made up, right? Cause when he's not made up, he looks fucking weird. Yeah. He looks like me. You know, Marilyn Manson. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of does. That's right. When I, um, when I shave and, uh, from like certain points of view, I look like Marilyn Manson. When really? He's not, but yeah. he has a chin. No, he doesn't. No. Yeah. He also does no. not have We're a looking at pictures. Like- Oh, it's all makeup. He's sticking it out. It's, it's all fucking makeup. makeup he's contouring. Man. Yeah, that's, uh, contouring that's, a, <laughs> that's a trick I used to do before I grew a beard. I stick my chin out in photos. There you go. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe. Why is Marilyn Monroe pop up on the uh, <laughs> Google? Yeah, so I. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, man, the, the stand will be pretty sweet, but that's cool that they're actually like the miniseries is coming out on the original miniseries is coming out on Blu ray. Uh, <clears throat> the cast list came out, didn't it? Oh, everybody? Pretty much. I mean, I know uh, James Marsters, one of the prettiest guys in Hollywood, is uh, playing Stu. Jane Moister. Rob Lowe. I told you. you. Look, yeah, you do look yeah. at Marilyn Manson. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. So I just pulled a picture up of myself in a, with a side by side of Marilyn Wait, Manson. So. But yeah, they got a. Uh, huh. Yeah, James Marsters. I mean, that, I, I think that's the only that's the only actor of any like. That pe- that everybody knows. Oh yeah, Amber Heard. Amber Heard is playing the uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Molly Ringwald's character. I don't know who Odessa Young is. Wait a minute, Whoopi Goldberg's in this? Yeah. Really? It just said scroll Wait back minute, up playing, a little who's bit. Who's playing Mother Abigail? Oscar winner Whoopi Goldberg's in negotiations to play Mother Abigail. Oh okay. Well there you go. Perfect. Yep. Sister Act three. <laughs> Don't they do a Sister Act I'm three? I'm pretty sure so. This would be Sister Act four. <laughs> there was three. Sis- th- there was three. <laughs> I thought there was three. Yeah, I thought there was just two. There's three. Uh, no, wasn't it, like, it wasn't. Oh, there no. wasn't. So, no. wait, so the second one was back in the habit. Yep. Yeah. Wasn't the third one called like third act? No. no. Shit. Okay. All right. Did you guys see pictures for the uh, the Sanderson sisters Funko Pop? Yes, and I want a hundred thousand of them. I knew you would. Yeah, that's no, actually, I didn't see that. It's actually really cool. Oh it's the God, three of them standing so over a cauldron. Cute. Look at that. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I, I guess they're running for like uh, thirty something bucks. You can pre-order it now. Nice. So if you're a fan of Hocus Pocus, and Pop Funko, and Pop Funkos, pick these up. I uh, I gave up on getting Pop Funkos. Okay, but they take up way too much space. I'm gonna need some of these. 
You're way them, yeah. too much space. Yeah. They do take a lot of space. I got a ton of them. Yeah. But I'm not going to stop buying them, though. I have a few that I took oh. out of the boxes for my nieces because I don't fucking care. Eugene has a, <laughs> Eugene has a section of his uh, apartment where it's just like floor to ceiling, wall to wall of just like Funko Pops. Yeah. Like, dude, like, you I don't have, have a lot. Yeah. It's going to be one of those things where you're going to be like a hoarder. You're going to like crawl into bed. It's just going to be Funko Pops There's everywhere. Be, yeah, Pop Funkos yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Cat's going to be like, Eugene, we got to get rid of them. And you're going to be like, shut up, Cat. I, I mean, unlike the, the, the Beanie Babies, there's the, a lot of them still hold value. Like I just looked up the, yeah. we have Sam from Trick or Treat and that's mm-hmm. like over $100. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. I got a few, uh, quite a few uh, Chase figures too that are worth like, uh, there's a Jason uh jason chase variant that glows in the dark that one's worth a few hundred bucks now Word. Oh, yeah. nice and i just like, bought it because you... i found it like on a it was one of the first yeah pop funkos that i ever bought too i think one of, i don't i have a freddy krueger that's a chase i think one of them is i don't know i do know that that uh elvira red dress one is a big deal too yeah. that's yep. like 500 i think yep yeah um yeah but i, I just i don't have room for pop funkos anymore um <laughs> well he says, as I say, we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we know that Sean Cunningham and Victor Miller are still in a pretty heated lawsuit with each other over mm-hmm. Friday the 13th bullshit. Mm-hmm. So because of that, Friday the 13th is pretty much dead in the water. But yeah. it's it's springing uh it's springing fan films, which is really cool. Uh, oh, we yeah, got never ne- hike alone. We got never hike alone. Uh, there's a, a movie called 13 that's coming out. There's yep. a couple other ones. And there's even a wait a minute. 13 13 fans. So which one's the one that CJ Graham's gonna be in it where he plays uh Jason's dad? Uh shit, I forgot the name of that one. Um because that's coming out too. Yeah, that's coming out. And then there's another one where it's Michael Myers versus Jason, but it looks good, surprisingly. Um, really? Yeah. Hmm. Uh and then there's uh, another one that uh she legally changed her name to Deborah Voorhe- Voorhees, the chick that got killed <laughs> by the the shears in part five. Yes. Right through the eyeballs. Yeah. yeah. She like modeled in Playboy for a little bit and shit. She's a huge Friday the thirteenth fan. She's uh she's making a fan film and Corey Feldman's in it. <laughs> no shit. Yeah. Is he's, he gonna play Tommy? He's playing Tommy. No shit. Yeah. Wow. So that's, I mean All that's right. pretty cool. Oh, Michael versus Jason. Yeah, here we go. Nice, Pat. Thanks for bringing that up. Wait, is this a, the whole film? Oh, okay, yeah, I did that. not see this. How long is it? About twenty Wait. minutes. Shit, I'm gonna. Okay, so there's a Michael versus Jason evil emerges short fan film, and Jason looks awesome. Yeah, he does. Wow, that's a good looking Jason. Oh, I like how this is shot too. All right, I'm gonna have to watch this for later. Yeah, yeah. Pat, you got to turn that you, off. Uh, I'll keep, I'll keep uh, talking uh, about it. I was gonna see if you can fast forward so we can see what. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to spoil like. anything. Oh, yeah. probably, probably like Michael Myers. Obviously, <laughs> dick. <laughs> you just want to throat punch him. Oh my god, I just want to throw him. Throat? You want to throat me? No, I don't want to throat. Well, I'll throat you, then I'll throw you. <laughs> I got done doing my throat warm ups at the beginning of the episode. Oh I know. I god. felt like I was like I was spitting when I said throat. throat. <laughs> See, maybe you should have done your warm ups with me. Throat. Loosen your neck like an asparagus, and you wouldn't have that issue. No, I'll give you a new a new slack. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a neck. wet asparagus. Yeah. Uh. So, yeah, so we got all that bullshit going on with Friday the 13th. Uh, but uh, Tom, Tom McLaughlin, the writer and director of Jason Lives, he wrote a new script and has like a fresh take on the series. Oh, um, OK, but unfortunately, he was in an interview. He's like, yeah, I can't really pitch this yet until this whole lawsuit's done. Uh, but he said he has a new vision and a direction that the series could take. Cool. Maybe they can reboot it. I mean, Looking. he's the one that, that so Jason and Michael Myers are going at it. This looks horrible. <laughs> oh, I'm going to watch it, though. How high were you when you watched that originally? You're like, yeah, it looks actually pretty good. That's uh, Those are expensive. That's, uh, I don't know. That's good. It's good. It's all right. It's all right. Uh-huh. Pretty high. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, he, it, Tom McLaughlin, he's, he's the one that introduced the Solomon Grundy version of Jason. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the undead, like, shoot you with a shotgun over and over and over and keep getting up, Jason. Before that... Jason was just like a mountain man. Hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It, hopefully, I, but honestly, dude, shit like this never comes to fruition. You're right. But yeah. it's nice to, I, I guess, you know, a boy could dream. A boy could <laughs> dream. Uh, how far are you in Stranger Things? Uh, I have two episodes left. Nice, nice. Yeah. You I know that the, uh, 40... the last two, seven and eight episodes. Or, no, episode seven and eight. How do you like it so far? 
I love it. I love it. Yeah, we're what? Oh, five, it blows five, part two, It blows the second season out of the oh, water. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That, this is amazing. This is a fucking phenomenal. <laughs> um, I love Hopper so Hopper's much. my favorite. Hopper is the man. He's Hopper is the, the best. absolute man. You know what? I got to give fucking David Harbour, man. That guy, he's like... He's been in like a ton of movies and shit, mm-hmm. like before so like Stranger Things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he likes tiny parts. But this movie, like, fucking brought out like he's or an this show brought out. Actor. He's awesome. He's so good. Also, I like how he kind of goes method. Yeah, where he's always kind of ch- he was always been kind of chubby. Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> he got um, really chubby. And it was funny. He, yeah. yeah, like he got in super good shape for Hellboy. Yeah, yeah. and then turned around and I mean. If you watch Stranger Things this season, you see how yeah. what a mess he looks like now. All right, yeah. it's, it's not crazy. it's not hard to get like that. No, it's not. True. It's not hard to get a, a couple weeks of fucking donuts, uh, like Krispy Kreme. Oh, I read an Boy, interview with him where shit. he said he just ate Dude. everything. Good. He man. didn't care. He didn't do a lick of exercise, and he just ate everything. And you know how he good find. he's gonna look once he drops that shit and fucking hits the weight again. Yeah, he's yeah, a handsome dude. dude. Yeah. That fucking stash that he rocks though. Yeah, uh, Hopper stash is crazy. Yeah, that's a that's a that's good a total soup, porn stash. Good looking soup strainer he's got there. Yeah. Uh soup but yeah. Strainer. Forty point seven million <laughs> oh households. Oh my god, look at that beard. That is to coin Micah he man's game. He right looks there. like oh. Chubby Dexter. He looks right there. <laughs> he got the Thank you, Pat. Clap from Pat. Thank Chubby doesn't Dexter. He, doesn't he look like Chubby Dexter? He does. He does yeah. look like Chubby Dexter there. He looks like a fox. It, yeah. So 40.7 million households have watched Stranger Things since it's come out July 4th. Holy shit. And I mean, I'm sure That's more. Amazing. I'm sure more are going to come in the next week. Um, you say awesome. I say amazing. I was like, That's you're right. amazing. You're right. God. I'm becoming self-aware. <laughs> so Stranger Things is totally boner town. Yes. yes uh, Sarah Paulson said she won't be in the new season of American Horror Story 1984. I yep. didn't, don't really know why. I, I don't know. If maybe she just because she's doing movies now. Well, he, Evan Peters is going to be on it either. Oh, yeah, he's that's been, true. He's been on it since the first season. And I think Billy Eichner, who has been on the season a couple of a couple of last seasons, he's been on it. He's not going to be on it either. No. But Emma Roberts is going to be on it. Oh, excellent. Yeah, excellent. I'm uh, I'm just looking forward to like the, the wardrobes and stuff and what kind of music they could get rights to. I think I'm really, be yeah, really I'm cool. really interested to see what, you know, what they're going to come up with this season, the whole Slasher series. Should be interesting. Yeah. Oh, uh, dude. Hell yeah. Um, Apparently that new Scream adaptation is pretty fucking bad. I haven't wow, watched it yet. We're all very shocked. <laughs> well, because the show wasn't terrible. That that show wasn't bad. The you're, one that MTV did. I th- you're the only person I've heard say that. I've heard it was terrible. It was just oh, wow. the mask was different. Like yeah. this was like straight up Ghostface. Um, but it's four four episodes, and they already had two. I think part three is tonight. By the way, to this is July 9th. You'll be hearing this on the 11th. But um. So by then, I guess it'd be done. But I, I guess it's not good. I guess they're really forcing the whole like, hey, you're watching Scream. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a shame. I just well, like <laughs> imagine someone shrieking in the background the entire time. <laughs> and that's what you mean by really. This is Scream. Just someone just fucking wailing. I guess um, <laughs> it went. So it moved from MTV to VH1. And. Queen Latifah. VH1, yeah, she she produced it. And I guess uh, it's so bad, though, that VH1 is just dumping it, which is why they did, like, two episodes in one night. There's going to be another two episodes Good. the next night. Is it only four episodes? I don't, I, it's four or five. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to, yeah. So they're, they're trying to dump it out as quick as possible so that way they can just be rid of it. How long are these episodes? Are they, like, an hour long? I'm assuming, yeah. I mean, I would still like to watch it eventually because it's, cause it's Scream, and yeah. I love Scream. Yeah, so there you go. Just pulled it up. Can you scroll up on that? I, 40, I think so it said like three night event. Minutes. Yep. There it goes. Okay. Three night event. So they're going to fucking dump it all in three wow, nights. Wow, dude. Two episodes last night. I think two episodes tonight and then the finale. Damn. Yeah. Shit. All right. Um. Well, I guess I'm still going to watch it. Oh, yeah. Let me know how it is. What a fucking swerve it would be like they like unmask him and it's Billy from the first one, just like oh, 20 years shit. older. Uh, that would be awesome. <laughs> like a parallel dimension or <laughs> I survived no, the first one. Uh, 
Or the oh. guy who the guy who played was Shaggy. Was that Ghostface on the Moon? That's what I thought. That it was Ghostface on the Moon. Oh, oh that's see, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. You don't think that's cool? <laughs> no. Really? Yeah. Right. It's a bad Photoshop. It's bad Photoshop. You guys are bad Photoshop. <laughs> um. So James Gunn, he came out and said that uh, he's pr- he's tied up between Suicide Squad and Guardians for the next couple of years, but he does have Brightburn uh, pen for a sequel. Which I still haven't they seen. They left it wide open. But so they're gonna, I didn't think it made enough money though for it to for it to warrant a sequel. Yeah. No. I mean I know on on my other podcast, Geeks I Lift, <laughs> Pat actually brought up that oh, he thinks that they were gonna make like seventeen million is it was a gonna lot. Be, see, seventeen million. Yeah, that's definitely not how much did it cost to make? Say oh, so well, it did so turn they, a profit. So they, yeah. they made a profit, but and especially you think that a movie like this will actually do pretty well in Blu-ray sales. Mm. Well, we'll drops. see. I, we'll I mean, see. I, I think it would. Like streaming and or yeah, yeah, yeah man, digital yeah. downloads digital, and shit. Yeah, renting I on. Uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, seventeen million. It only, it only cost six million. They made seventeen million, so they turned a profit. But I don't think they turned enough of a profit to crank out a sequel. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a sequel, but yeah, man. I mean, you know, I still have to. We'll see. I still have to. I can watch this. Yeah. Uh, did you hear about uh, the Hall- Halloween coming out next year? I think, I think we touched uh, touch base on that a couple episodes ago, but David uh, Gordon Green is going to be back to direct Halloween 2. Now, the rumor, and we, gotta, mm-hmm. we have to say rumor, but they are filming Halloween 2. <sighs> 2? Question mark? Or Halloween? Would this be Halloween three? I think it'd be Halloween three. Okay, it so, would be, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Because this one was technically Halloween two. So they're filming yeah. two Halloween movies back to back. Yeah. Now that's a rumor. The other yeah. rumor is is they're going to be released two weeks apart from each other in <gasps> October. Yeah. Uh, where one comes out middle of October and the yeah. other one comes out like right on Halloween. Right around Halloween. What? Yeah. That would yeah. be so cool. Oh, they would get my money. Yeah. Both. Opening, oh yeah, yeah Both opening days. The 2018 Halloween just went beyond expectations. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I just said awesome. See, there you go. I, I okay. stopped myself and said so cool instead of amazing. So. <laughs> At least uh, you're working on your problem. I'm trying. I'm sorry. So, I mean, that I think that's pretty cool. I know uh, uh, some of the stuff I read, there's people saying that they hope that does that isn't the case. I hope that is the case. Oh, I yeah. think that's I think that's great. Um, what do <laughs> you holy shit? Two hundred fifty-five point five million oh, that's, that it made. That's how much Halloween made. Fucking now that's, that's a total box movie. office, then, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie made a ton, a shit ton of money. Yep. So yeah. domestically, it did one hundred fifty-nine thousand, one hundred fifty-nine million. Production budget ten million dollars. Yeah. So of course they're gonna churn out, and rightfully so, All because when movies. it comes down to the classics right now, I mean, like we haven't seen Leatherface in a long time. Jason mm-hmm. is pretty much dead in the water, and mm. Freddy is laying dormant. Yeah. Um, so is that I mean, a pun. I, I was going for it. Dead in the water, laying dormant. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Got it. Really Got wish it. you didn't point it out. Why? I was because I, I was just going to ride that out smooth and not draw attention to it. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't you want to draw attention yeah. to it? That was really good. Because See what I did there. Well, you know, yeah. Whatever. Like Would yeah. you say that was awesome, Eugene? That was good. <laughs> uh, that was satisfactory i mean we do have um we do have uh, uh this the reboot of child's play but i mean i'm not gonna do the hashtag not my chucky or anything like that but i mean chucky's still around but he's not on the level as michael jason freddy um True. yeah um which how about at the end of the episode we give a little review of uh child's play Ooh, Works for me. full of spoilers yeah we'll warn you sure We'll warn you because I've got plenty to say about that. Before we do that, yeah. Um, with Halloween, you heard about the rumors for the Halloween with the the last one that they were the the reason this this rumor now about the back to back sequels and then them being showed, you know, both in October. That original the original plan for Halloween twenty eighteen was they were going to film two movies back to back. I didn't know that. Yeah, and actually, the 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 producers or the creators actually joked, and they were like, "Let's just fucking film the whole trilogy, back to back, it's to back." Going to be a trilogy? I guess so. Huh. That's a rumor, though. And okay, 
I mean, I, I think because uh, Jason Blumhouse, Jason, right? Jason Blum he said, said he's going to make as many as 10, possible. He wants ten fucking yeah. Halloween sequels. But somebody was like, you know, let's make the three movies because you know it, that's how it, that's how it's I mean, okay. Yeah, like you're going like, to do like da- three David Gordon like a trilogy, and, then you're uh, going to have some time pass, and then you'll do like another trilogy, kind of like Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will if these come out yearly. I will go see them religiously. I'm going to go see it no matter what, whether they suck or not. But yeah, you know, just to support. It seems um, like we've got a huge renaissance going on right now, which... A renaissance. A renaissance. Yes. Yeah. Of... Everything that's old is new again, and they're getting yeah. it, you know, they're retreading it, they're repackaging it, and selling it to us again. And a lot of it is shit, but a lot of it is pretty good. Hmm. I don't like how you said Not that. Not awesome. Not awesome. <laughs> no, 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 all, right, all right. So real quick, I know we said we're going to say the review towards the end, uh-huh. but uh, new child's play. Yes or no? Uh, if I'm only allowed yes or no, I'm going to say yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're all, okay, good. good. We're all in agreement there. Yeah, because I fucking loved it. Um, hey, Pat, do me a favor and look up the trailer for uh, Vampires on a Boat. I want these two to, I want these two to bear witness to this masterpiece. Uh, Fire Breathing Films. Release the trailer for fire breathing films. Fire breathing films. When did that become a thing? I don't know. Uh, vampires on a boat. Uh, there's no release date yet, but it is coming out sometime this year. I mean, we had snakes on a plane. Uh, I'm pretty sure they had a snake on a train, like a big evil snake. Um, oh, Pat, I'm sorry. It's V A M P Y R Z. What? Yeah, they I got, already want to fight. They the got really, they got really, movie. they got really fancy with it. They took like that early two thousands, fucking there you go, that early two thousand like Hardy Boys, Dudley Boys. <laughs> it's like, hey, my business has an S at the end of it. I'm gonna take it and flip it and splash some color in the background, make some fucking money. Um, yeah, vampires on a boat. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, I hate advertisements so much. We're pulling up the uh, the YouTube video right now, so guys, type in "vampires on a boat." That is V A M P Y R Z, and watch this trailer because it is fucking awful. But I'm gonna watch the shit out of this, and I'm so excited. Hmm. I feel like the vampire. Ooh, cr- can we do like a a guessing game of how many tits we're gonna see in this movie? Um, and like how often? I'm gonna guess because this is. Uh, there's not a lot of girls in here. I'm going to guess maybe just like two different sets of naked bosoms. You think so? I'm going to say yeah. one set. One I set? I say one set two times. Okay. We well, her, we're going to see her tits for sure. And hers. Maybe hers. You know what? Maybe we'll see more tits. Mm, I don't know about that. I'm we're going to see two. his tits. Especially fucking be Admiral tits. Be Captain's. Tits. Yeah, we're not talking about guy tits. I know, I know. You're talking about Damn the it. moobs. I'm having fun here. No um, fun, Micah. I'm sorry. Oh, Discuss this. Jesus we're fuck. all about no fun. Yeah. This is a that business guy's podcast. in things. Yeah, that guy is in things. But look at that. Vampires, Vampires on a boat. On it looks boat. like someone typed it. Like they there's did type there's it. no <laughs> No, no, I mean like, look at that. Like there's yeah, exactly. V A M P Y R Z. At least it's not that fucking uh uh Papyrus. Comic Sans or yeah, Papyrus or Comic Sans. Papyrus from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! That's funny. Ready? Uh. Oh. Oh, so they didn't even that think I have it. No so idea. Vampires yeah. goes and then on a boat is there for a split second. Oh, that's funny. That's pretty funny. Well. Either way, all we know is that they tried. I imagine they just kind of like pushed this together. Um, I imagine they just kind of like like mash this trailer together. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it did, it did, did look like it was pretty piecemeal. Like it was like it was like just scenes from different movies. And like the kid was just like, movies. "Look, I just really want to let people know this is happening," <laughs> and just like put all of his shit kind of just together. Um. You guys have anything else you want to cover before we get into today's subject? No. Uh, yeah, that. actually, Ooh. I got one thing. Is there, Eugene. Um, I know me. What's sneaking in the back door. New 
That's Eugene. That's what that's what we mm-hmm. love about him. Do that's, you know that there's a Hellraiser we? TV series coming out? Uh huh. Okay, so I didn't know if that was real or not. It's being brought to us by the producer, a producer, one of the producers of It, and one of the producers of Ready Player One. What? It's a reimagining of Hellraiser, and it's being penned by uh, David S. Goyer. He wrote like the Blade movies. He wrote like he, uh, yeah, pretty much any was, like superhero that property. Familiar. Yeah, he wrote. Um. So actually, no, 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 no. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Actually, the Hellraiser TV series that's going to be brought by the producer of it, the producer of Ready Player One. Uh, basically, that's going to be its own thing. They're also doing a reimagining of the original Hellraiser movie. That's going to get penned by David S. Goyer. Uh. Okay. So they, I, I remember like getting teased for the last 10 years of a Hellraiser reboot or yeah. uh reimagine yeah. or, uh, you know, Oh, Doug's going to be involved or fucking mm-hmm. uh, Clive Barker is going to be behind it. Uh, and then it always seems to fall through, but plenty of people want to see this and they want this to happen. Why hasn't this like, is it a financial thing? Is it does a studio think they're not going to make money off of it? So instead, they fucking make these shit fuck sequels when uh, when really we need a big. Excuse me, see, Dina Might was a treasure. <laughs> I'm aware of that. I'm saying shit fuck sequels <laughs> in like the past, like two, two, three, four Hellraiser movies, not the C Dino bite because okay. I love the C Dino bite. Yeah, yeah. So you don't like the guy who ate up the paper and then vomited it out, and blood came out and squirted all over those girls' tits. I did like that part, not the part when he was eating, more the girl's tits, which was also really confusing why they were all wearing thongs. Yeah, like, just make him naked. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they were just too bushy. Who knows? Maybe. Well, it's 2019. Bushy. No one's bushy anymore. You're right. Yeah, you'd yeah. be surprised. Actually, there's some yeah, bushes like out a, there. There's an oh is natural the, thing a, going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I know a fistful of girls yeah, that have the hairy armpits thing. Smelly, bushy. Bushes. Bruh. Big smelly yeah. bushes. <laughs> Bl- Big smelly Man. bushy bushes. Oh, that make a good movie. Big Ew. smelly bushes. Big smelly bushy bushes. Big smelly. All right. Okay. Anyway, anything else on the they agenda? They tumble around like critters. <laughs> oh my! No matter God. what they do with Hellraiser, I'm gonna watch it. They're yeah. Big, big uh, I mean, fanatic, I am so. too. Just. I- you know, Dude, it just seems last, like every last every movie that's come out since those last two the third Hellraisers, fourth one, anything after the fourth one just sucked ass, and they've they've gotten you did worse like the worse. fourth one with uh, the Bloodlines. Bloodline run. Yeah, I love that movie. Yeah, I love uh, I love that. I love Angelique. Yeah. I love the whole scene yep. with the two brothers fucking their heads yeah. getting screwed together. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that, that, one. that was so yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, that was awesome! I, 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 the whole story behind and they it. They had I the dog too, the centibite dog in that one too. Uh, rah, 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 the one that ate the dove. Yes. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, that was that was good. Plus, I, I, I love how Pinhead killed the one dude. Uh, in uh the present day time, like ninety. Oh yeah, yeah. Whatever. When yeah, the, yep. the scorpion move, yep. like get over here, yep. and chopped his head off. Yeah, dude, that was killer. Um, I'm a huge Hellraiser fanatic. It's just, it's just. Oh, me too, man. That's why I'm hoping, I'm hoping this whole thing, you know, I hope the TV series is a, a, a definite thing that's coming out. Um, now I'm I, just a little, you know, not so optimistic about the reimagining movie. Now for the future, uh, like, we're not going to get too deep into Hellraiser because for the future, I we're talking about doing a, a Hellraiser episode like a two-parter and bringing in mm-hmm. uh, Dick justice to help us with that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that, that is going to be a good time because he bleeds Hellraiser the mm-hmm. way we do. Yeah. Yeah. It secretes it. <laughs> um, all right, guys. So today we, uh, we wanted to do something a little different where, um, and we're not covering multiple movies. It's more of us just kind of sticking to one so we could go back on this subject. Uh, we're doing based on a true story where I, we're going to pick, uh, a horror flick that's based on a true story talk about it and then talk about what really happened um maybe not so much really happened but more of i guess was more you know the fiction straighter than fa- oh fuck i said that all wrong <laughs> but anyways who would like to go first not it pat i heard you oh, oh God. <laughs> that was seriously like a george bush thing shame me once Shame on you. Shame it twice. You can never shame me again. 
The fuller don't get fooled again. <laughs> Which, by the way, rest in peace, Ross Perot. I would love that as a fucking white walker coming at you. Wow. Ross Perot. Yeah, Ross Perot's dead now. Yeah. Yeah. And I finish. Um, <laughs> he looked like a white walker when he was All alive, right. though. You want me to go first since you already know Yes, mine? go for it first because I am so excited about this. All right. So last night, because, I mean, based on true events, I think I'm a huge serial killer nerd but i figured we'd do this multiple times there's a lot of based on true story shit or true events so i went for an easy one and i i grabbed from hell starring johnny depp heather graham hagrid and frodo (laughs) and they so it's about jack the ripper obs the serial killer from 1888 who was also known as the white chapel murder as Mm -hmm. well as the leather apron murder um the movie so here's the thing (laughs) (laughs) let me just straighten up here i saw it for the first time as a young gal who loved her some johnny depp now this movie came out in 2001 would that be the last time you saw it uh no i can't say it's the last time i saw it this is the last time i i think that's the last time i watched it in its entirety okay so about that um (laughs) this movie's rough it's uh (laughs) i remember this being good yeah me too until I watched it last night, and I was like, this is really fucking hard to watch. Johnny Depp is so handsome. Oh, my God. It, like, starts off with uh, Johnny Depp is chasing the dragon in an opium den, hanging out, and then he, apparently, like, his character gets visions of crimes and, like, things that are going to happen, and that's how he solves them. And this is 1888, so the cops are like, sure, sounds good to me. Let's Instead hang this man Instead of burning of him. Yeah, right. Because they would have done that to a woman. Well, yeah. Yeah. We won't get into that. Okay. But anyway, so that's how the movie like starts. And then there's all this like all this stuff with the sex workers and they all have their own very <laughs> what? The sex workers are my favorite part of the movie. They're the well, they are the movie. Good lord. It's like, all right, come on now with it. She's like reaching for the dude's crank and he's like, What? Right, come on in, mate. We'll go someplace nice. And she's like, No, right here we do. Now come on with it, give me it. And he's like thrusting and he's like I don't think I'm there. I think I should go between your thighs. And she's like, oh, what of it? Come on with it now. And then starts fucking pounding her. And then like five I seconds ho- I later. I want everyone he- to know that this is also the voice he does for Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> 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 so I'm really uncomfortable right now. <laughs> of Mrs. Potts getting dude- fucked by some old English man. <laughs> <laughs> Just the dude with like no teeth. He's so dirty. He's like, what? Come on. There we are. Uh, all right. See okay, you at the pub then. The thing. Wow. Micah's not far off. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> how it wins. I can't. <laughs> but then they like they force this love story between Heather Graham and Johnny Depp. It's so fucking weird. Well, oh, actually, we'll go back to the part where this girl, one of the one of the sex workers, she has like a baby, and she's with this guy who's like supposed to be super rich and. So she like has her friends watch the baby for her while she goes and fucks her guy who's home from I don't know France or. But whatever. really, the baby's turning tricks. <laughs> yes, exactly what happens. No, so she gets like taken away. Well, she's fucking him, and in the middle of it, like these people come and take her away in a carriage, and then she ends up being lobotomized later on. So she forgets everything, but it turns out that she's like. The guy's not, like, just some rich painter or something like that. He's actually, like, a prince. They put in this whole weird, like, backstory with the royalty because it actually... <sighs> there was something about he got, like, an STD there from was her a, or something. Yes, there was a grain of truth. Well, not truth to that, but it was one of the conspiracy theories is actually what I believe this movie is based on because it was a whole, like, thing with the royalty where uh, they gave him syphilis. E- syphilis, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah. So they gave the prince syphilis, and then so that's why they went on, like, a rampage killing, like, the sex workers in London. So that there is some, like, you know, grand truth yeah. there. Again, the love story between him and her, I don't know why that ever became a thing i don't know why they forced that but, like, but it the, was really fucking weird the part that was really fucking weird is that she's a hooker in white chapel sex which worker. is sec- <laughs> the movie came out in 2001 Tomato. yeah okay so uh so she was a sex worker and i, I apologize i understand uh <laughs> she was uh she was a sex worker in fucking white chapel which is supposed to be just like streets covered in shit yeah like there's no light at night like it's completely pitch black so you just like walk into shit other people yeah hooker, uh, other sex workers mm-hmm. and like why is she there 
And then why at the end of the movie is she like in a beautiful well, they actually, fucking countryside well, they explain house? That. Did they? Yeah. So I forgot about that. This part is when too. I was cutting the grass. Yeah. So yeah. she actually was raised in Ireland and like the small town and she describes it. And then her mother died and her father brought her to London and then she has been turning tricks ever since. Oh, so that's why okay, she ended up okay. back at that cute little village in Ireland with that baby that didn't end up getting killed or lobotomized. Yeah. That was the prince's baby. But I, um, so the murder part, it's actually, honestly, there was a really good thro- uh, throat slitting scene that I enjoyed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was super good the way it looked. I mean, it was still like, you could tell it's digitized because it's early 2000s, but it actually looked pretty smooth. I think around that time they were using a combination of practical yeah. and CGI. It, it did. It looked super smooth and it, it, was like one of his more frantic like berserker kills but um yeah so and that's also based on like the real jack the ripper thing was he he targeted sex workers and he they say he was a skilled surgeon because of how well he cut into everyone and how clean his you know everything was Mm -hmm. and he would remove an organ every time he did it it would be a different one every time but um his no i think it's they say on here canonized that it was five Uh, murders but really they're not exactly sure how many women he ended up killing or if he killed men too or anything like that but yeah but his known murders are of the of the um yeah the women whose organs were removed and he kind of used that to send a message to london it was very like the movie was terrible (laughs) so (laughs) it ends up that frodo the the mask you keep saying frodo or i'm sorry not why didn't you stop me no, not Hagrid too, Bilbo. <laughs> oh, Bilbo! Wow, yeah. you guys are in like different movies, and you guys are so far off. <laughs> well, Hagrid's in. You it. knew what I was saying. Yeah, you knew, it I knew was what I Dildo was Baggins. Yes, it was wow. Bilbo. I yeah, a good old Bilbo. That. So anyway, Bilbo. It turns out to be the killer. He's like this master surgeon, <laughs> and he. Bilbo. Yeah, he, he was, almost had like a red dragon thing there when they yeah. when like they figured out it was him because he's like such a nice like. Oh. Hello there. Come to my well, office. Well, he's Bilbo when he puts the ring or he gets oh, you the yeah, ring. Oh, yeah, with the, the ring. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then when Johnny Depp, like, like fucking figures out it's him, yeah. he, like, turns, like, full Hannibal, like, red dragon, yeah, like, fucking, insane. like, he's like, I am doing the work of a god. Yeah. And, then, like, when he's getting, I do like when he's getting tried and, they're like, yeah. do you have anything to say to your peers? And he's like, well, I have no peers here. Yeah, because he's like a mo- he's above everyone else, and they fucking lobotomize well, cool. him. I'll give I gave birth to the twentieth century, something like that. Yeah, something like that. Um, I mean, it's pretty pretty fucking popular. Uh, you know, serial killer. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, and it was brutal, especially for the time where, and that's why everybody was so shocked by the murder because it was clearly done by someone who was you know knew what they educated. were doing yeah. yeah and everybody just assumed they're like oh serial killers it's definitely like bums on the street and that even they yeah they do that in the movie too where he's just like this couldn't have been like he refuses the constable lead co- or whatever they're called in london <laughs> constable. I don't fucking know. Constable. um he was talking about how like there's no possible way it could have been an educated man like an educated man wouldn't do anything like that like that's so uncivilized and that's that was literally like evidence was basically ignored because of that that's so that's crazy. why and that's another reason why a lot of people think that there's a lot of conspiracies behind it too because they're like okay well you had to have known or if you didn't want to see the evidence or whatever but then again it was 1888 and women didn't matter now how many specials have come out because it, people have been supposedly it's already been solved who jack the ripper was they're saying that he's the, buried in rochester new york oh, really that was a, yeah uh, oh are they confirming that because that no, was an old thing that, from when i that was, was uh, uh that was a couple years ago i think it's different now yeah but they were saying there for a while that he's the guy that moved to western new york um and just died in rochester no shit. Of all fucking places. All yeah. right. Well, here there's um. There was like DNA on a. Well, so. there's genetic analysis finally reveals the identity of Jack the Ripper. There's genetic tests published this week point uh to Aaron Kosminski, a 23 year old Polish barber and a prime police suspect at the time. Critics say the evidence isn't strong enough to declare the case closed, though. What? 
Mm. Yep. The results come from a forensic examination of a stained silk shawl that the investigators. That's what it was. Yeah, was there found. was a stained. Yeah. Yeah. She was the uh, next to the fourth victim, Catherine Eddowes. Yeah, that's. I mean. So are they saying that that guy isn't the guy that's buried in Rochester? No. Okay. No, I don't believe so. I mean, honestly, this this happened so long ago. It doesn't matter forensics or whatever. I don't think we're ever going to find out who who really was. See, Jack that's why I love true crime because we could. Yeah, yeah. like we, you Dude. absolutely could. Look at fucking Golden State Killer. No, I get it. I mean, but with the stuff, that with the you're stuff found. I mean, a lot of the evidence. I mean, this happened way, way, way back in the day. So, yeah, I mean, it's not really. It's you know, not like you don't. There's have, nothing that we but, can we can prove definitively. Yeah, that it, it was a certain person. Unless we could get the actual DNA evidence, if they find st- a stronger link, yeah. Then hell yeah. yeah. And how crazy is that? Like solving a murder case that's over a hundred years old. Yeah, like, that's so cool. Even no, if there's it gets, no use for it. Even if it does get like solved, there's always going to be that doubt because oh, yeah. of because of uh, how long it, how long ago and of all course. this and that. But unfortunately, still so cool. Yeah. Anywho, that was mine nice. from hell. God awful movie, but <laughs> Jack the Ripper, he's he's some guy, that's for sure. Isn't he? <laughs> he's what a sure. guy. Ooh. What a guy. Ooh-y. Old Jack is quite the hoot. Old Jack. Oh, old Jack always says. Jack. I know from hell is actually it was based on a dues. comic too. Is it? A graphic novel. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I wasn't aware that of that. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. Is I don't that know, I don't know if it was Alan Moore. Like I think Alan Moore was the one who uh who did it. Really? I might be wrong, but no, you don't look wrong. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Have you? Have was you I right? It? Was Alan Moore? Uh... Yeah. Damn, I know my shit. That's a geek that lifts That's a right geek there. That lifts right there. <laughs> shit. Big dick, Alan Moore. Yeah. That's awesome. That's nice. Crazy. Nice. Eugene, you want to go, or do you want? Yeah, yeah I'll go. Uh, okay, I mean, okay. mine's gonna be short and sweet, pretty much. Um, Mike has a three-page essay. So yeah, Mike right. has a whole fucking notebook full of shit. So it's my I'd, pat. I'd rather go. Next. <laughs> it's my my pat erotica. <laughs> <laughs> the one, uh, the the one movie actually. It's a. I don't know if it's a lesser-known movie. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, but it's a movie that came out in the eighties. It was uh during the whole you know slasher horror movie fucking ghost boom that was going on around the around that time uh the movie that i'm talking about i don't know if you guys ever heard of it it's called the entity with barbara hershey i've heard of it is yes. that on amazon prime right now uh i don't know if it's because i is oh, it on amazon I, I prime i'm not sure back, I, it's streaming somewhere i scroll by a movie called the entity and it's that oh yeah it's yeah. that font too that's yeah. what it is yeah. This is is this good? Barbara Hershey's in it. I remember seeing it when I was when I was younger. I mean, honestly, I don't I I don't I haven't seen it since. Like honestly, this movie I saw one time when it premiered on cable and I watched it with my family. I think it was like Showtime before HBO. Huh. But uh yeah, it was I remember seeing it in this movie like it didn't it didn't freak me out, but I was like, what the fuck? Basically, it's a story about this lady that lives in this house with her two kids. And she gets terrorized by a ghost. Okay. And she gets terrorized, though, in, like, the weirdest ways. Because instead of, like, the normal jump scares and shit like that, this ghost, like, sexually assaults her. What? And rapes her. Yeah. Rape ghost? Rape ghost. Oh, my God. Rape ghost. Yeah, rape, rape ghost. ghost. I knew he existed. So there's a... It, it's it, it's crazy. I, I mean, what's even crazier is that this is actually based on a true story. Like, there's, there's a scene in, this, in the movie where they try... You know, she keeps... Basically... She starts getting assaulted by the by the sex ghost. <laughs> then she starts getting first bruises and stuff because she's getting thrown around while she was uh, getting raped. She tells people they really don't believe her. Then she talks to like these paranormal alien investigators. Alien and the Omen? From the producers, yeah. The alien and the uh, Omen. And, um, you know, then it just starts getting worse. There's a scene where I think she moves... From one house to another. So yeah. it turns out that the house wasn't haunted. Does it follow? It followed her. So there's a scene Eugene, where there's a bunch of ruckus going on. And they open the bedroom door and she's like pretty naked. But you see like somebody's touching her boobs, like like squeezing them and oh stuff. Oh my God. And her face, her lips move uh. a certain way. Like is there, the ghost is assaulting her. Yeah, it's pretty... Uh, it's kind of it's it's a little graphic. It's pretty fucked up. Bad ghost. But yeah, I remember I remember seeing this movie and it 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 was I was like what the fuck. Basically, that's what it was. It was what the fuck. What the fuck. And uh, it's a pretty good movie. And we'll it, it, the, the story one. that it's based on is kind of it's kind of weird too because uh, 
same thing. They the movie followed pretty closely the actual story, where uh, the lady's name was Doris Bither. Doris Bither. Doris Bither. Um, Bither she lived, Timbers. I think I don't, I don't know if it was in Connecticut or something along those lines. Would live with her two sons. She claimed that she was being raped uh, by not one but three. Ghosts. Oh shit! Yeah, it was a. Uh, it's weird. It's weird. She was, but there were two smaller ghosts and one bigger one. And I guess the small. It depended on the day or the night, which one decided to mess around with her. And then normally, and then she 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 described one of the one of the instances where the smaller ones held her down while the bigger one took advantage of her. Like it's pretty fucked up. Jesus. But yeah. But uh, her sons started. Uh, would see like the ghost throwing her around the room and shit. Jesus. So they believed that it was, uh, that, uh, it, that, that it was haunted. The, the, the house was haunted. They thought the house was haunted. And then at uh, one point, what happened at one point they, she decided to move. She actually got a hold of some, you know, paranormal investigators and stuff. And before it was like a thing. Yeah. And you know, they thought that, that the house was haunted as well. Turns out that in real life, she moved, the ghost moved with her. The attacks Jeez. never stopped. And from what I read, they terrorized her till the day she died. Oh. So it was never, yeah, it was never like solved. Like she never got any yeah. peace, like any of that shit. So like oh she didn't God. like reach an age where they like weren't into it anymore. <laughs> I guess my not. God. <laughs> I guess uh, well, not. <laughs> come on, Drew. Jesus wow. Fuck. <laughs> uh, and that sounds more like demons than ghosts. And that's what some people claim too, that it's a, it was, yeah. instead of it being a poltergeist, yeah, but not that it was, it was either that it wasn't ghosts, that it was probably a poltergeist and that it probably wasn't a poltergeist that they were demons that they were following. Because all Patrick Swayze could do was hold a fucking penny. And these, like, there's three of them, Jesus like, Christ. raping her. Like, these are demons. They're not I ghosts. also <laughs> only refer to Patrick Swayze's ghost whenever I'm <laughs> referencing real life ghosts. <laughs> Imagine a fucking train of Patrick Swayze ghosts just giving it to you. But no, stop. Oh my god, I'd make him do the dirty dancing thing every time. Yeah, pick up over his head. <laughs> Two birds, one stone, yeah. baby. Get the fuck ghost Andy. Nobody fuck puts Mark Delilah in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> While I do, because she's 16 years old, you 32-year-old pervert. <laughs> So yeah, so I mean, I would recommend watching the entity. If not, I'm pretty Hell sure yeah, a man. lot of people that listen, they hear haven't either heard of the movie or haven't seen it in a while or heard of it but never seen it. Yeah. So check it out. All right, Micah. Well, um, I picked a movie that I actually don't like, The what Conjuring the Two. Ah. Yeah, it's uh, The Conjuring Two is just basically a. Oh, sorry, Pat. I bumped the mic. Don't yell at me. The Conjuring Two is basically just like a superhero movie. A Christian superhero movie. You're right. And now uh, I, I've, I've expressed how I feel about Ed and Lorraine. Um, I like how he says espresso, but says espressed <laughs> instead of expressed. I will have a double espresso. Good job. And get drunk off of them because I'm weird. Um, so Ed and Lorraine, they show up to Enfield. This is the movie. They show up to yeah. Enfield, which is a borough uh, in North London to investigate a poltergeist. Uh, there they meet Pe Peggy Hodson. Uh, she's an overwhelmed single mother of four who tells the couple uh, something evil is living in her home. Uh, Janet, uh, she's the second oldest daughter. She sleepwalks. She talks to this old man who's in the house. Uh, he's not living there. He's dead. This old man who he's just super pissed off. He's like, he's like, this is my house. Not fuck you. Eat shit, you know, stuff like that. Say they're and, uh, selling what? What? <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> I remember when they first made chocolate. Uh, so anyways, this old dude's name, he's Bill Watkins. Uh, Watkins, he possesses the girl. Uh, like, well, like the media is there. Uh, talking about how he how he loves tormenting the family. Uh, the Warrens, they, they show up. Uh, they move in. 
and they become like so this is like around the second act like the the warrens are like well we'll take the case yeah um so so like they're living with them and there's like a bunch of cutesy stuff between the whole fucking family damn freeloaders yeah like yeah so it's and then like that all that weird shit with like the daughters like looking up to them like they're like second parents like this is second mommy second daddy um other mother uh, oh put some buttons on your eyes um (laughs) Yeah, so they become close to the family. Uh, but so as they're like observing like all the events happening in the in um, in this house, they find uh they they watch a hidden camera where Janet is just making a mess and breaking shit mm-hmm. and screaming with like the door locked, making it seem like oh it's a poltergeist like throwing shit around. Uh, so when they see that, they're like, well, fucking great, this is a hoax. Uh, you know, we're not going to get the church's blessing to have an exorcism here or any of that bullshit. And we're totally not in it for the money. No, no. Cause Ed and Lorraine, I almost said Bob and Warren, Ed and Lorraine <laughs> <of> Warren, <laughs> they do not, they do not accept money or cash or anything, even from the church. They do this just because they love people. Uh, so they leave, but, but. They find out that the infamous nun is behind the events, forcing dun, old man dun, Watkins. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Uh, he, the, the nun is forcing old man Watkins to possess this this fucking the, the fucking kid. Um, and then I don't know somewhere so somewhere along the lines, this fucking crooked man shows up and does this whole gangly dance, which is kind of oh. cool, but it's also super CGI, and I get so sick of that shit. Um, but basically they just introduce this crooked man character for no other reason than to be spooky and to make another character in the uh, ever expanding conjuring universe. <sighs> That's going to be a movie too, right? Eugene? Probably. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Lorraine. She also has these like visions of like Ed dying. Uh, but you know, Oh, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ugh. that. Oh, that was so bad. Because you know he doesn't fucking through his chest. Yeah. You know they don't die. So why tease? Why tease it? Tease yeah. the fucking family dying. Like tease the kid dying. Yeah. The mom. Like don't tease the Warrens dying because we know what happened. Yeah. They grew old and rich, and they fucking died like ten years apart from each other. And Lorraine just died. What? Like this year? Yeah. Last year? She did. This no, year. F- fuck her. This year. I'm glad she's dead. Um, oh my god. Oh, she's a fucking. <laughs> um let's see so yeah, and, uh, fuck you dead bitch. <laughs> dead fucking bitch um so yeah uh lorraine she saves the day by beating the nun by saying the demon's name it's only weakness valak because apparently this is fucking rumple stillskin uh, <laughs> the, the the third this whole third act is just so fucking <laughs> <laughs> So the, I think it's just Drew's reaction. Uh, so this whole third, Jesus Christ, Drew, get it together. Yeah. Okay. okay. Situate yourself. Okay. All right. So the, the third act is just extremely rushed and fucking with this weak ass ending, where uh, Peggy and her four kids are expressing their love for oh the Warrens. My God. Remember that? Oh my god, that oh, was like, so cringeworthy. Oh, it was awful. That was the most like feel good Christian. We all like love will prevail. Pickles will prevail. <laughs> like love, love will fucking prevail and save us all. When like, when really, really, that is not the case at all. Well, yeah. No, okay. uh, Janet grows up fucked. Because she was being possessed by th- this thing was inside of her. Yeah. Yeah. And she's still alive. And if you ever see a fucking video of her, like if you go on YouTube or even on the, the Conjuring 2, there's a special feature where they just talk about her. She doesn't want to talk about this. And when she does, like she like she does shit like she jitters back and forth and her eyes like she's she has the look of a woman that gets 45 minutes of sleep at night. And Drew, don't make any comments because you don't have those eyes and you get at least two to three hours of sleep, <laughs> <laughs> which were uh, which is uh, a step up from what we're used to. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, anyways, this movie, this whole movie fucking ends with Ed locking the crooked man music box up in their evil room of doom. So I am positive we're going to get uh, a crooked man movie. Um, it's it's definitely it in the works. All right, uh, 
Yeah, but like first things first, if you look up the Hodgson's, these people, they made Ken, Kenny McCormick's family from South Park look like keeping up with the Kardashians. Uh, <laughs> Peggy's job was just to wash towels. Uh, she was like basically a local. Man, you bag. were really in writer mode when you were in this because you even smirked at your own thing when you said that. That was a good one. That was a thanks, good one. thanks, thanks, thanks. See, I thought you were gonna shit on it. No, I was gonna I, be like, like "Bitch, it. don't you kill my vibe!" Oh my god! Fucking get my black gay Jewish lawyer in here. Sue your ass. Uh, the uh, you, the Jeffersons music. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's see the I uh, the Enfield haunting was in fact terrifying uh like let's see da, 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 da. uh it, this all happened when like janet started hitting puberty so uh you get like the 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 stress of that living in this small ass fucking like north london flat with your disgusting family uh, uh it's it's all just like the perfect recipe for a poltergeist um so this is what she said it it, it lived off me off my energy call me mad if you like those events did happen the poltergeist was with me and i fell i i i fell that in a sense he always will be so there you go i uh, it like this whole thing started august 30th 1977 with uh just like just like some some banging some strange noises uh Peggy, the mom, she saw like she would like go into like a room and she's like, what's that racket? And like a fucking dresser would just like come at her <laughs> um, like crazy shit like that. But like I. Uh, so they were saying stuff like like Janet, Janet would talk like an old man, like the voice coming out of her throat, like her mouth, like mm -hmm. was that of like a 70 year old man? Like mm -hmm. there's no way this fucking girl can fake that. Yeah. And there's video there's there's video evidence of that. She's sitting there talking and she sounds like a crotchety old Englishman. Ugh. Like that's fucking terrifying. Yeah. There's there, no kid is that fucking talented. Um, so like, I, uh, the Warrens, the Warrens had nothing to do with this other than they showed up one day. There was already a paranormal investigator staying with them, uh, Maurice Gross, and he was getting really close. Crazy with a, old Maurice. Crazy old Maurice. <laughs> he just. <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's great um so he you stayed he uh he stayed with this with his family he was there for like 18 months uh like he like he completely like ruined his reputation on this case too because he like firmly there was no, like like so many people think this is bullshit but he firmly stood behind it like he wrote books on this um and he devoted just like the rest of his life to talk about this enfield haunting um the warrens they showed up one day unexpected because word got around about it and uh ed and lorraine they pulled their shit where they were like hey you guys play ball we can make a lot of money off of this here i imagine that's what ed sounds like uh, oh hey i don't know i'm just a small town peanut farmer like oh like fuck God. it <laughs> sorry Jesus. um yeah so, so ed did his whole like let's make some money but here's the thing peggy she like had no intentions on moving out of this flat. She's like, I've been here for 12 years. This is where I'm going to die. Um, she had no, like she had no worldly desire. She didn't want money or anything like that. So she basically kicked Ed and Lorraine out of her, out of her flat. Like get the fuck out of here. She like sent them packing back to America. Now, mm -hmm. It's documented that they were there. That's why this movie got made uh, due to rights, uh, like mm -hmm. issues with like rights and stuff like that. Cause you know, like the Amityville and shit, yeah. shit like that. Um, so they, what is so goddamn funny? <laughs> this thing that Pat has on something really funny. Happened. Oh, movie <laughs> sin counter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it. Um, Basically everything that's wrong with the movie. Oh, there's so much wrong with the movie. Um, <laughs> which is what we're discussing right now. Continue, <laughs> like yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so the re yeah the reason why this movie was made was because of copyright issues they didn't really the warner brothers studio they didn't really have a lot to go on so they found this enfield haunting out right um now they made the movie they replaced maurice gross with the warrens uh because that's what the whole conjuring universe is basically just ed and lorraine uh and uh let's see I apologize. Uh, so the daughter, uh, Janet, she didn't know this movie was being made. 
Nobody contacted her or hmm. anything like that. What? She was extremely upset that this film was made. Um, and uh, that's why they, they like, uh, after the DVD, well, when the DVD was set to come out, yeah. that's when they, they had her like, well, let's interview you for the extras and we'll pay you handsomely, that kind of thing. Oh, my um, God. But, like, the, the interview is fucking haunting in itself because she just doesn't want to fucking be there. She doesn't want to be there. And... It, it, like not just in the the extras but any interview you see of her or you hear her voice she is so weak and oh. just so she is a broken person like she's mm. broken now everything just kind of died out like it slowed down it kind of reached its peak where uh eventually like shit was showing up around the house uh there would be like shit on the kitchen table shit in the hallway as in shit shit it was shit shit hmm. but like it's like that you know when like like a little kid like little kid poo yeah yeah like you know whatever but then like you know what old man shit is <laughs> it has a scent <laughs> like like grandpa shit is awful now that's what this shit was this was like grandpa shit popping up in i don't the know if end. i ever smelled grandpa shit I don't think I have. I don't think I have. You ever like walk? You ever, no, like grandpa gets out of the bathroom and you walk in and you're just like, oh my god, it's like a dead body. I don't. <laughs> maybe I don't know. I don't think so. No. I, uh, no, I can't yeah. say that I can. Either that or I repress the fuck out of it because uh, it was that awful. It's it's yeah. a it's a it's a very haunting scent. I bet. Clearly. I recommend going to an old folks home. <laughs> no, 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 thank you. And uh, just uh, I, you don't even have to walk into a bathroom for that. <laughs> you just just embrace that scent. <laughs> um. But yeah, Jan uh, Janet, she's she's 49 years old. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, she, her, she had a son. And the son died in his sleep at age 18. And that was right when the movie came out. Hmm. So how awful is that? That you it's find out awful. that this movie came out about your childhood haunting. Yeah. And in the, like the same worst thing that's ever fucking to you. week. No, I think the worst. Well, oh, there's well, that. Yeah. And then in the same week. Her son dies. Yeah. Like, that's a kick in the vag. Yeah, that's fucked up. Uh-huh. Yeah, but, um, okay, so back to the uh, the actual Enfield, uh, the flat there. Uh, so, like, one last story here. So, after Peggy, Peggy Hawson eventually passed away, uh, Claire Bennett was her neighbor. As one does. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, everyone dies. Yeah. Uh, Claire Bennett was her neighbor, and uh, so... Claire Bennett and her four sons, they moved into this Enfield home because it was a smidge bigger than what old Claire Bennett had. So when she's like, oh, Peggy kicked the bucket, uh, she'd like it if I moved in. And uh, for some reason, they all sound the same. Um, so Claire Bennett, her four kids, they moved in. And uh, like Janet, uh, let's see, Claire claimed that she always felt like someone was watching her. And would hear voices in the middle of the night. The final straw. Now, they were smart. They fucking moved. The final straw was when her son woke up to see a man enter his room. The next day, they moved out. Oh, that just gave me goosebumps yeah. all over the place. So that uh. is the story. There is so much more on this. Like, I recommend, like, uh, like seriously, the Enfield haunting is so fucking fascinating i forgot about um, this oh god that shitty the i'm not drew drew attention to it. drew drew <laughs> attention to I it i just did it so you could sorry it. there's a scene on the, the conjuring where ed is playing guitar around the family and if there's one thing i hate more than anything is when somebody pulls out a fucking acoustic guitar and has everybody <laughs> sit while they strum three fucking power chords and sing wonderwall god damn it <laughs> i hate that so much <sighs> um guys i had a lot of fun doing this one yeah it was good i like uh i like the idea of doing this again absolutely uh, i like so the whole much, like, like based on true story based on true events shit so like many. that now does roddy piper's hell come to Frogtown? i think that's based on a true story so i may cover that next okay <laughs> <laughs> i have no words I, that's um, why i just agree so 2019 child's play Oh, so, I totally forgot we were talking about that shit. Wow. Right now, right now, I am uh, giving everyone fair warning. 
we're going to spoil this movie if you haven't seen it. Yeah. But, I mean, there's not really a whole lot to spoil. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. What happens, which I like. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, I want to go off and say that I love this movie. I thought April What's Her Nuts was great. I thought the kid was... April What's Her Nuts. <laughs> first Aubrey off, Plaza. in the show, it was April Ludgate. But yeah, yes, Ludgate. Her actual name is Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> what? Yeah. Her name's not April? Shut up. No, I'm being serious. I thought it was April. No, it's April Plaza. Aubrey. It's Aubrey? Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza. Plaza. Huh. She's a babe. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she's, she's my sexy fucking spirit fuck. animal. Yeah. And she's... God, that spirit animal thing is being so overused. Um, However, <laughs> if anyone she, were... Yeah, she is. She's your she Patronus. Is. Yes, she's my there Patronus. There you go. There you go. Um, I love how it starts. I love how it starts in the... Uh, yeah, like so they the, completely take the supernatural aspect out at first. Like totally. It's, uh, yeah, so it's just the disgruntled employee took out all the fail-safes from the toy. Well, it starts with the, the, the commercial uh, explaining yeah. what this product is. Yeah. The, the whole... Kaslin company. The Kaslin company, everything's... It, I imagine that's like a Google or like a, yeah. like an Amazon Echo. I figure it's... I like figure, yeah, it's, it's okay, yeah, like Google Home. Okay, yeah, Google, Google Home, Amazon or, those lines. or... Yeah, or iPhone it's, or... Like Apple. Everything's set up. So you hook everything up through your phone. It controls like the locks of your house, the TV, temperature. Everything runs off of one system, um, which is where the buddy doll comes in. It controls everything. Yep. Uh, you just tell it what to do. Um, so that's where you were saying how it starts with. Uh... Oh, you want me to continue? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like, I just wanted to get that part across. Yeah, no. That's fine. Yeah, so it starts with the guy who's getting yelled at at work and like told about how bad he sucks. So he's going through one last Chucky doll and he just takes out all the fix because that's what the doll's supposed to do. So they have all these fail safes, and so in case it becomes, you know, self aware or whatever, it can't harm anyone or it makes sure to deflect away from all of that. Well, he takes all that out, so then it can just like kill and destroy and all that shit so that's really what happened. and then he goes and kills himself didn't you think it was kind of weird though that, that it was so if easy. i was a boss <laughs> he <laughs> smacks the fucking dude in the face yeah. for, for uh daydreaming We're also and then ch- instead of saying you're fired get the fuck out of here he goes you know what you're fired but first finish up this doll then leave consider where they are though <laughs> yeah yeah it's like just, if he, if he left without finishing funny. they probably would have killed him i found yeah. it just super funny yeah but I mean, yeah that's then that's you know he like took to off work. all the fail safes and then you know next thing you know he takes Jumps a dive the building. out yeah yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah then the chucky doll gets out it gets returned to a store that because it's defective so aubrey plaza, aubrey yeah. plaza. finds it a lot of humor oh my god scene. so much humor yeah. a lot of humor in it yeah i enjoyed the uh the very very good balance of humor in this movie yeah humor to horror ratio yep. which i thought was very well done yeah. Um. It was perfect. Perfect amount of comedy, especially with the cop. Yeah. Trying to eat, cop trying and his the, the lame jokes. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. very good. Um. <clears throat> so, uh, how do how did you guys feel about Mark Hamill doing the voice? Oh, it was so good. Yeah, that did I, it for me. I, I liked his voice. I thought it, I thought he did amazing. Yeah, I, actually, I thought he was underutilized. Do you know? Hundred percent. I hundred percent think he was underutilized. You're not wrong, and I forgot it was Mark Hamill until like the end when he yes. starts like talking and everything. Yes. And then I'm like, oh my god, I totally forgot it was Mark yeah. Hamill for a second, which made it funnier when like <laughs> he asked the little boy to Andy when he asked Andy to name him, mm-hmm. and Andy wanted to name him Obi Wan. That was Han Solo. Han Solo, Han Solo like, that's yeah. it. Sorry, <laughs> it was one of Han Solo. Yeah. Chucky it was like, no, it's not even right. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> Chucky, I like that. That was awesome. Yeah, that, that was, was really, really great. cool. Um. Uh, I uh oh uh, so it's it uh Chucky kind of starts picking up on things. Uh he he does uh so these dolls they imprint on someone, kind of like the werewolves in Twilight, uh where they kind of protect you and hmm. you're like the main That's your reference you're gonna pull out, eh? Oh yeah. That's I said reference. it I said it with a straight fucking face. You did. Oh yeah. Continue. Uh so Chucky uh there's a cat there and uh he calls him an asshole and he's like, Oh, he's an asshole. And they're like, he's like, whoa, I didn't think you could swear. So that's where uh, he just kind of, he sees that Andy gets a kick out of it. So he he goes, oh, Andy likes when I swear. So he swears. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, he swears more. And uh, uh, the cats, cat scratched Andy, which was Chucky's first kill. Mm-hmm. He killed the cat. 
because he was an asshole and scratched Andy. So now there's time for uh, Chucky and Andy to play. Now, the part that was really terrifying with this was Chucky with a smile on his face played an audio recording of him killing the cat to Andy. Like, like uh, staring at him. Well, he was staring at him like he was proud. Um, that was the difference that uh, was between this Chucky and, uh, you know, Charles Lee Ray. Mm-hmm. Charles Lee Ray, who was a born, born bad, you know, yeah. serial killer, uh, rapist, robber, all that shit. Uh, where this is almost like a child trying to, like, I don't know, please its master. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but I. Uh, Take it from here. His next kill. Which one was the next kill? Was it the... The dude. It was the dude, right? Yeah. So, yeah, after that, what? I'm just remembering it. Oh, my God. It's yeah. so funny. There was, um, like, the guy is dating Andy's mom, so obviously Andy hates him, but he's a total douchebag anyway. Oh, yeah. And like, so Andy hates him and makes his comments about him and Chucky obviously overhears and see shit. So Chucky ends up fucking killing him. Well, first off, the guy like leaves April. <laughs> well, damn it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he yes, leaves yes. Aubrey Plaza and pleases me. Andy. And um, he goes home to his wife and children which was man's like, got a double life yeah an entire other fucking life so you're just like so excited to see how he's gonna go the wife says something that made but, it even better oh my god absolutely yeah because first off he was a piece of shit he was already a tool bag but then but it's that like, was oh, just yeah. icing on the cake but yeah. yeah finding out he had a wife and kids were just like okay bye so he's like up on a ladder trying to take like Christmas lights down and Not all of a sudden something like happens that. with the ladder and he falls down and breaks his leg hard. Oh, oh yeah. It, it was the standard bone just break going one through. Or both. Was it both? Yeah, I think it was both because when he landed, you saw like he landed two, right on yeah. his own yeah. bones come out his shins. Gosh. Yeah, so it was that really great bone splinter through the pants and legs and clothes, everything. So that part was fucking disgusting Oof. and amazing. And he's crawling, like army crawling down the lawn because he sees Chucky. And Chucky starts a was it a lawnmower or like one of those um uh, it was I, like, it was a, like a almost tiller. like a rototiller. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't I'm not And a it was hand. uh he was so he was wrapped up in the lights and the rototiller was pulling the lights. That's right. So which was in turn pulling him. Yep. Oh my god, that was so <clears throat> fucking good. And what did Chucky say before he killed him? I don't remember. Eugene? Oh, I don't remember. This is for Tupac. Oh, oh yeah. God. Him. That's right. That's right. And then so Andy comes home to fucking the guy's head. <laughs> on his... Andy wakes up to it. Yeah, that's right. He, wakes he walks up. out of his room and did one of those like, wait a minute. What yeah. the fuck? steps back. <laughs> and it was the dude's head chilling there. Oh, was it his, his face was pinned to a nailed to a watermelon. To a watermelon. watermelon yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. So then. Oh, my God. Yeah. So then he like wraps it up. They're trying to get rid of it. And then he, what? Oh, because his mom and they were trying to throw it down the garbage chute, but then his mom catches him. Yep. And asks him what it is. He's like, oh, yeah, it's a present for her. And it's, it was the cop's mother. Yep. She neighbor. helps me with my homework. And the mom's like, all right, let's take it to her. So she like makes him walk over. And, <sighs> and actually, the neighbor, like, bless you. That was nerve wracking. Oh, my God. What, yes, yeah, the neighbor you, just like went along like, with it. Yeah. But then they agreed that they wouldn't open it until Andy's birthday because Andy's like, oh shit, if she opens this, there's a fucking face on a fucking watermelon. <laughs> like, teeth. Yeah. I just, uh, again, it's the, because uh, Chucky presented the dead cat like uh, the way like a cat would bring like a dead bird to the yeah, family. Yeah, exactly. He did the same thing with this guy's face. Yeah. You imagine him just so happy, just like, he's going to love this <laughs> as he's like nailing the face <laughs> to the watermelon. Like, now we'll be friends forever. Oh, uh, yeah. Which like that kind of like makes it's me feel. Cute. It makes me feel for uh, Chucky. He almost I know. was. He almost was sympathetic in this. He was. He yeah. definitely had sympathetic moments. And then he went. He killed the the creepy uh, janitor guy. Yeah. The, 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 the like the facility coordinator of yeah. the of the apartment building. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like to call him Jack Black Light. Yeah. Because <laughs> he yeah. looked just like Jack Black. Yeah, yeah he did. I actually thought it was him for a second. Yeah. Um, it's almost like that dude from uh, Freddy versus Jason that's 
like Jason Mewes, like Jay but Mewes. not oh, Jason yeah. Mewes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember he said like, something. God, I love being in that. Wait a yeah. minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. In I wasn't in Freddy vs. <laughs> Jason. What the fuck? Never sleep again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was all the best. Awesome. <laughs> Such a good documentary and like the little things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, child's play. Child's play. <laughs> so he, I, uh, I, uh, oh, that's right. So the Andy and a couple of his friends that he meets because Chucky's a pretty cool doll because he swears. Uh, they end up tackling chucky ripping uh, ripping his hardware out uh hard drive whatever and uh oh that was andy what are you doing no i know that was so that's why he he did it he got my sympathy he got like, my that sympathy was amazing too. um die ah, damn it i did it that was so cool <laughs> did it again boner yeah. town awesome <laughs> i love you guys just thanks for your support all <laughs> anytime yeah so i uh, that was um that was a pretty man's game murder, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so dude is uh, dude's trying to get away from Chucky, jumps up on a, a pipe. Chucky, of course, with his magic uh, finger that glows, controls everything in this apartment complex, which apparently also controls the hot water. Yeah. So he <laughs> uh, made the pipe 200 some degrees, yep. whatever. Dude, yep. uh, a dude's holding on for dear life. Underneath him, there just happens to be a table saw running. Yeah. What? An awesome mm -hmm. kill! That was what a an really awesome good kill. kill! Oh man, that was good. That may be my favorite kill. Yeah. No, of the movie. No, 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 no. The dude in the giant Chucky head, <laughs> the buddy doll. Yeah. All right. So finally, yeah. they're announcing uh, the second coming, uh, Buddy Point Two O or whatever, like the yeah, new buddy the two. new buddy dolls. Yeah. Where they're like, there's a blonde one. Yeah. Uh, uh, dark haired one. There's like a bear. There's a, bear uh, there's a black one. It's like Cabbage Patch Kids. Yep. Um, but they fucking kill you. Uh, so Chucky guy, Chucky gets to the store because that's where uh, April Lovegate works. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, he sabotages the whole thing. He gets drones involved. Uh, but oh, sorry. He, so he kills the, the, the one worker he put on that giant paper mache buddy head. Mm -hmm. Chucky's inside of it, stabs him in the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the, the curtain, the curtain opens, opens and all blood the blood pouring out. All the kids are there <laughs> and they just get blasted with blood. Yep. Oh, what a fun scene. That was a good scene. Uh, yeah, the third act was balls to the wall, man. Yeah. It was, oh, yeah. They just threw caution to the wind and said, yeah, they, were, they, they took humor completely out of it. Yep. And it was, it was gritty. Crazy. And, oh, yep. There's a scene where uh, a fork truck is uh, raising its forks. April Lovegate is tied to a noose to it. She's oh, man. That was nail biting. That was that really was. That was so good. Um, I'm going to go as far as to say that this is my favorite horror movie of 2019 so far. It was Headhunter. Wow. It was Headhunter. Uh, I'm Child's Play right now. There you wow. go, baby. Put it in. Uh, Put it in. It is stiff. It is firm. It is just dripping I, no. with passion. I don't know, man. You know what? It was a good movie. I like the movie. Um. But when I just like just like I told Kat when I when I walked out of the theater, she's like, "What'd you think?" I was like, "I like it. I like it a lot." Mm -hmm. But I would have loved it if it wasn't called Child's Play. Yeah, I was okay That's with fair. that. I was actually if I separated. It, if it wasn't called Child's Play, then then I would have I would have been I would have been I would have I would have absolutely loved the movie. Understood. Yeah. I uh, the way you uh the, the, when we talked about Pet Cemetery. Do a shot, Pat. Oh, God. He, he said, said it, it again. Here. Oh. Are we still recording? Yeah, yes. Keep going. <laughs> he didn't tell us to stop. Okay, yeah. clearly he did not. Um, So the way like uh, I felt about Pet Cemetery, where I could not separate the 89 version to the to the new version yeah. i could not separate it somehow That's you true. were able to mm -hmm. um i kept playing because it just went along the story so like hand in hand and the little things they changed just irked and pissed me off and the character just changed so much yeah. where in this one they changed the story so much. They changed everything. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So much. It didn't That's, need to have the it, original one, which is yeah. a, I agree. I'm I'm going to say that even though it's a child's play movie, I still enjoyed it as a child's play movie. Yes. Okay. I did too. I'll it was just that. a, it, it was like, uh, like evil dead where it's just like another story. Yeah. Yeah. But it, and the other thing too, is that I, I, 
as much as I, I love Aubrey Plaza, I think she was underutilized. I, I think Mark Hamill was underutilized. Well, the only time you saw it's, her in underwear was like through a fucking black and white TV. Right, she's underwear. a great actress about? and doesn't yeah, need no, to I'm get naked. About, yeah, no, no, she doesn't. I don't. I don't want to see her naked. She's, I'm just talking she's, about she's a good actress, just like herself. But um, but yeah, well, Mark Hamill. It was just. It was just. You know, like the original Child's Play, you know, as soon as you got to the part where the mom was going to take, you know, you're going to put him in the fire. Yeah. And she said, you better fucking say something. I'm throwing you in the fire. He's like, you fucking bitch. And he yeah. fucking moves through shit. Fucking bitch. From yeah. that point in the movie on, it was all Chucky. He was he wasn't talking like a doll anymore. Yeah. He wasn't. Uh, and in this movie, he talked like a doll pretty much the entire movie, with the exception of like the end. Yeah. Of well, it. even at the end, he was still like a. Uh, he was he I, it wasn't like a doll it was just like a like a little kid that didn't understand what yeah. it I understand that but it, yeah. that, that's just, they, yeah, it just they really and, and humanized I'm, and him I'm sure film. that was all Mark Hamill but still it's just yeah. it just when they I, don't know, when, I wanted more personality yeah when it finally was showing some of Mark Hamill's personality yeah. that's when I was just like holy shit yeah, yeah. Mark Hamill it yeah. was really good oh, yeah. he's so man's game he's uh for me it's uh the best voice actors are him and uh uh Tom Kenny uh, who does SpongeBob? I think because oh. he because Tom Kenny does everything too. Yeah. He's, he's you know he he was the Penguin in uh, yep. the the Batman. Um, yep. And funny, uh, I was going to say Kevin Conroy. Uh, Kevin Conroy is a phenomenal voice actor too, but he's yes. just synonymous with Batman. Batman. That's it. Yeah. Um, where you have somebody like with range, like Mark Hamill has fucking range. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. I mean, and not just that. Put Star Wars aside. Have you ever seen the motion picture? Corvette Summer. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, you Of course seen it? I've seen it. Yeah, oh seen my it a man. Bunch of times. You're like one of three people. Of times. You're that seriously was, like one of three people I know have seen really? Corvette Summer. Yeah. Puma's the other one. Okay. And uh 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 Will. But anyways, I uh, yeah, Corvette Summer is phenomenal. Guys, oh. I'm not saying watch Corvette Summer, but do yourself a favor it. and watch the trailer to Corvette Summer on YouTube as yes. soon as you're done listening to this. There you go. It is phenomenal. <laughs> like, I, honestly, the trailer's better than the movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was funny, too, because I was just watching. Um, a, did you guys ever see uh, Village of the Damned? John yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Mark Hamill's in that, too. He's yes, a yes. Yeah. Uh, how about the Giver? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. A little mm-hmm. alien mm-hmm. costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I fucking love Mark Hamill. I think he's just amazing. I yeah. love oh, when yeah. he makes cameos Absolutely and is. shit. Yeah. And I feel like he was the perfect choice to voice this iconic character, Chucky. I agree. Yeah. The funny thing is that a lot of people, when he was, when he, when they were bringing, uh, when they were doing Force Awakens and they were bringing Mark Hamill back as Luke Skywalker, a lot of people were like, oh, finally, they're bringing him back. You know, he's doing the acting. You know, he hasn't been doing shit he's this, always this been whole time. Yeah. He's been busy yeah. from the last Star Wars movie that he was in up to now. Yep. Oh, yeah. He hasn't stopped working. He's nonstop. Yeah. He's go, 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 go. And he does so much voiceover work when it comes to video game shows, movies. Like, Mark Hamill's fucking everywhere. Yeah. Um, even more now since Force Awakens. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how did uh, how did we feel about the de- uh, design of the doll itself? I didn't mind it. They can't. That was do okay. the- yeah, I was okay I, I, people were shitting at it, but it's like they can't do the same exact thing that they did before. No, I thought can. it looked creepy as fuck because which is it, perfect. Oh, when it was in the corner, yeah. staring at Andy with half the shadow on his <laughs> head. Yeah. He was trying to get him to emote to scare yeah. the uh, boyfriend. Oh my god, the face! <laughs> no, <laughs> smile like, wider, wider. Yeah, yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> Open your eyes. There you go. Yeah, bigger, bigger. Um, Show more teeth. I, I part of me thought it was kind of cheesy that his eyes turn red when he was doing bad shit mm. um, Listen, that was cheesy but, and also the et thing I, was cheesy yeah but at the same time i liked it it was cool yeah. it reminded me of like a like a cartoon growing up like bad guys <laughs> always had red eyes yeah um yeah my favorite scene in the movie is uh before chucky goes crazy and starts really fucking shit up uh the andy and his two friends and chucky are sitting watching one of my favorite movies, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part yeah. 2. But, like, they're dying laughing. And Chucky's watching the TV and seeing the kids laugh. Yeah, that's why he took his face off. What? That's why he took the guy's face because, off. Yeah, exactly. Because of the leather, leather, leather face. But he gets the butcher knife from the kitchen yep. and has a big grin on his face yep. coming at the kids. They're Heads like, up, bitch. Oh, my God. Heads up, bitch. Yeah. Like... He was just at the end of the day, Chucky was just trying to make Andy happy. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's all he was trying to do. And I just, I feel bad for him. Yeah. yeah. Not me, because at the end of the day, it's a doll. Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Computer. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind a sequel to this with Mark Hamill doing the voice again. Um, but keep, you know, keep the two separate. Yep. Uh, got Child's Play. Don Mancini is going to be doing the TV show. And just, keep, God, keep these fucking other, keep these movies going. Yeah. I like yeah. the design. Yeah, I like the fun. I like the buddy concept. I like the, I, I like the, because this is, I, I mean, I we were sitting in the theaters and I'm like, yep, this is how it starts. This is how it starts. Because Drew knows how paranoid I am of our robot overlords. Uh, and like this is the direction that we're going, dude. There's this is a why I want to get a Google Home. There's a Kroger's. No, Scare you're not getting a him. Google Home. You're acting like you own shit. I, ah. Oh my god, we're not getting a Google Home. Oh, can um, we tell it to lock you in the house? Because it will. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I mean Kroger's. They have these robots that are putting up, putting produce or cleaning, cleaning floors and shit. Uh, like no, I don't like it. I don't like it. Pretty soon it's going to be the whole like uh, they took our jobs <laughs> because I, right now robots are taking all the toll booth jobs. Took our jobs. Fast food employees, yeah, have fun with that raise when a robot takes your job. Took our jobs. I don't know where I'm going with this. I really I like don't know Child's where the Play. Fuck you're going nope, with this I don't. I'm, yeah. All right, all right, guys. I love Child's Play, and uh, if you love us, you can find us at. Terror True Podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> We're also Terror True Cast on Twitter, Terror True Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Um, yeah, all that stuff. We're on, you know, Spotify, Google, Podcast, Apple, everything. Yeah. So uh, find us wherever. We're also on YouTubes. We're on the YouTubes. Yeah, all of we our are episodes on are up on YouTube. All of them. If you want to see what we look like, all of them. What do huh? you mean? What do you a, mean? It's because a picture of us. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Nobody cares. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't care what any of you look like. <laughs> Yet you stare at us every episode. True. <laughs> Why is everybody so quiet? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. We're done. So I leaned over. That. I leaned over to burp. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want right. to burp in the microphone. Well, on there, no, oh, dramatic pause. Real, real quick before we do anything, should we give our shout out? to maria yeah okay we can't swear we can't swear for the next like minute so my little sister was she was doing something and she accidentally hit her podcast in the car with my niece okay and my niece hears my voice and so my niece is four years old and so she's talking and she's like hey wait a minute is that aunt drew and my little <laughs> sister's like yeah she talks like that and mm -hmm. so like and then micah starts talking she goes okay hold on <laughs> what is going on here is that uncle micah and my sister's like yeah so i and also yeah i said my little sister's name is carrie my name is drew we get the joke yes. Drew carrie and then um <laughs> thank you pat so my niece basically asked for a special shout out so maria maria you're the maria. coolest kid ever maria and we're gonna take you to see adam's family when it comes out yep yeah and that's gonna be so much fun and i'm gonna watch more adam's family cartoons with you on youtube to get you pumped up for the movie gonna pump we're gonna eat so many sour patch kids and i'll let you know what color you're eating before <laughs> okay. you eat it we can be done now on that note i'm drew i'm micah and I'm Eugene. And we're, <laughs> and we're, uh, we're done. Not ever doing that. Wow.